Okay, YouTubers, this is Mark Three now of the rocket stove, and I think I've got it close enough for it to deserve to be actually inside. So far from just a brick enclosure, I've had a six-inch metal tube welded up. Um, I cut it and welded it at a 45 degree angle at the back. Um, I've laid that on bricks, as you can see, and I've packed household um, loft insulation around it. This is only temporary job. This isn't for permanent. I'm still messing around trying to tune the stove up. Um, <clears throat> what I've done is taken a 45 gallon drum and punched two holes in the lid smaller than the diameter of the pipe and then I've cut back to the diameter of the pipe I just drew round it bent them up and then forced the pipe up through I've done the same for the um, main pipe here um, <clears throat> and the main pipe is standing on another one of these flue liners they're proper chimney liners it's meant, meant to go in chimneys they're a nine inch inside diameter it's standing on one of those and it's packed as well with um, household loft insulation so nothing is welded up yet um, I've got a feeling that not much if any smoke will escape apart from anywhere except the flue itself. I'm about to put a piece of insulation around here and wire it and that should stop pretty much everything. Now the only problem with this system is that there is a, a rubber liner, you can see the black there, there's a rubber liner at the bottom of this barrel. Now I'm pretty sure that that's going to burn off but I don't really care. Um, my idea would be to lay some fire rope in round there and it is so that with the snap ring that goes on you can take the, the snap ring off and lift the barrel off <coughs> and clean out any ash which may be collecting in here. Now at the moment I haven't welded it as I say because I want to be able to lift the the drum up and down the pipe to vary the, the choking here. At the moment this choke will be set at two and a half inches to the bottom of the um, drum. Now I've tried an inch and a half and that left me with a fairly sullen fire unless I had really really dry timber. Now I, I'm not going to guarantee having dry timber all the time so um, I read somewhere that the the actual <coughs> size of the choke matters to the amount of draw so I'm experimenting. I will be firing this up later today. Um, there's still a bit of work to do. I've got to find some way of coming off the flue and taking the exhaust outside but um, I expect to have this fired up today and when and if I do, I'll add uh, another part to this video. So thank you very much for watching. This is my drum and this is my little workshop. I won't dwell on it because it's a mess. But I'm hoping that that's going to be plenty to heat my workshop and I'm sure it will be. And also because of where it is, I'm looking at that that's an ear brick and it goes into a basement so i'm thinking about enclosing this entire space <coughs> and then blowing the hot air that's produced straight through that ear brick to heat the house i thank you for your uh, attention we'll see what we see okay thanks a lot okay back again we're just about to start for the test fire. Um, I don't have any flexi 
um, pipe, flue pipe. So I've hitched up a four, four and a half inch drain, um, mains drain pipe, which is supposed to be temperature tolerant, um, high temperature. And temporarily it's taped onto the bottom of the flue there just to help get the smoke out of the shed and away. I don't really care if it leaks a little bit. I don't really care if it um, melts. I know that it's going to have a, a flexi tube on it and be led away properly. But this is a test firing to see what the effect of a fire in the drum will be. So, first of all, to see that there is no um, smoke escaping anywhere. We're going to have a, a very quick test fire with a piece of newspaper to see what happens. So here we go. Um, safety first, uh, of course. Push that in a little bit. We've got some flame coming out. And she's starting to suck. Yes, there she goes. You can hear her roar. There's no smoke coming out of the joint, and there's a wee bit of smoke coming out the end of the pipe. So, relatively safe, I'd say, for a quick test firing, considering it can all be put out, and it's only a six inch tube, so it can only be a certain amount of heat. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a bit of water on top of this drum and that's already steaming. And the drum is warm with just one piece of newspaper. So let's see what happens with a small fire. I'll come back to you in a minute, okay? Right, here we go again. I am using a fire lighter because I don't want a lot of smoke, so I want a fairly quick, fairly bright fire. So there's one fire lighter pushed in. It's already sucking towards the the drum, as you might be able to see. Uh, it's very difficult to do this. I'm going to load it through with a few bits of wood to see what happens. Now, the four inch drain pipe is restricting its flue, I know, well we'll have to sort that out at a later stage, but I'm just very curious to see what happens when it's uh, a relatively insulated pipe and a relatively bright fire in uh, this six inch tube. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to go up to 8 inch as most of the aficionados on YouTube recommend but 6 inch pipe was all that I could get hold of so I just built the thing as it was so okay we'll see the length of the burn tube here the, that's the flat tube I'm calling the burn tube is just under three foot and the height of the riser is um, three foot plus um, uh, it's about four foot four foot yeah four foot four ish I'll do all the measurements and all the rest of that sort of stuff later when uh, this has now been going for an hour and 20 minutes. I'm boiling three litres of water in a pressure cooker to see what, how long it takes to come up to 15 pounds worth of pressure, which is the maximum on a pressure cooker. Um, this is what I've got in the burn tube and it's going very well. It has to be looked at fairly frequently and there is a little bit coming back this way.
There's a teensy bit coming out the bottom of the barrel again, but not a lot. This pipe is still hot enough, cool enough to put your hand on. Um, the plastic pipe seems to have been doing nicely, but there's an awful lot, and I mean an awful lot, of moisture coming out of the end of the pipe. So I think that's a real problem that has to be addressed. I don't know how people address it for the uh, rocket stoves. Uh, that have got thermal mass because they're putting that through flexi pipe which if it gets wet and stays wet is going to rot so I should warn against that one because you will be getting all the waste gases um, what you see here is uh, mostly steam um, well no I can actually smell smoke um, possibly burning rubber now from the rubber seal, but we'll see what we see. Um, like I say, it's only a, an experiment. We'll see what happens later. We'll see how long it takes that little pot to boil. Um, that pot has now been on for um, 30 minutes exactly. I am timing it, that was the timer you can hear, I'm taking temperature readings in the shed every 20 minutes. Um, that's the shed with an open door. So once I've done an hour of that, I shall then sh put the curtain up on the door and take temperature readings. Um, I can't actually close the door because of the pipe, but um, I will pull the door to and I'll put the curtain up and I'll take readings every 20 minutes and see what the temperature gain is in this shed which is about 12 foot by 14 at the most so that's what's going on at the moment okay back again later there's the condensate as you can see that's about 20 minutes worth so you're getting a significant amount into your 